Captain's Log Supplemental. So, Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. Do you remember when we were watching those WRL events and some of those grid life events where you used to see the in-car video and it had like the, the cameras seeing front and back, but it also could see all the telemetry and everything that was going on? Mm-hmm. You know, most of the ones that we liked were taken by the Sentinel system. Remember James came on our podcast earlier? Right. You know, we have no excuse since he uh, lent us one for trial and demonstration purposes. We should actually probably put that in one of our cars. Maybe two. I really think we should. I think we should. I know. Because then we'd look like the uh, immature endurance racing team that we are. Oh, wait, I mispronounced that, didn't I? Sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> we could so what have, does the Sentinel system do? We could have three cameras with picture in picture. We could have, if we ever get the AIM system to work, open invitation to anybody from AIM to come on and give us a little bit of love. We need some help. Um, and then we could have all our telemetry on there. And then we can have it streamed live into the paddock or around the world to our millions of fans. We're apparently very popular in Kenya right now. Don't know why, but that's fine. <laughs> And it can integrate all the uh, available race statistics from like race here and everything. So we could actually see how we're doing on video. We wouldn't even have to carry around our phone anymore. Live. I love it. From the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Dominating with Dawson. Ah, Ben, it's me. How are you? I'm so glad it's you're Mickey. here. What's up? What's I mean, up? I'm, delighted to, I'm delighted to be here. Hit me. What's what's happening? Do you want hey, to be hey. dominating with Dawson? Dominating with Dawson with my friend Dawson. And Bill, you're here too? Am I? I am. Yes, you are. Yes, you okay. are. So I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited for this episode. And I know we've, okay. we've brought this up before in the past, but I met a wonderful gentleman named Nick at uh, Pitt when we were there doing an HPDE. He, awesome. had, he had moved from Japan to awesome. his home base on the West Welcome, coast. Nick. And then from his home base, um, he moved out towards Pittsburgh. Um, well, all right. Welcome to the right coast, Nick. <laughs> Welcome to the right coast. That's right. And um, he had done some, you know, uh, not, I wouldn't say small rate. Uh, small, I think autocrossing he was doing out there uh-huh. on the islands um, cool. when he was out there. No, I think he was in. No, he was in Hawaii. He was. In, he wasn't in Japan. He was in Hawaii. No. Okay, so he know. was on the Big Island, did some <laughs> some stuff. Anyway, he moved out here, and he did not realize that Pitt was so close to him. So he and his family came out, which was cool. great. So he asked some some uh, some interesting questions, and okay. to to get involved, he actually even sent me a text right after. So he's you know he was basically. Um, talking about how to start where to start how to start and and one of them was he's interested in um you know maybe starting with his caiman how can we help him set up his caiman and then podcast called garage heroes in training oh (laughs) right 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 and then right after that he's interested in possibly leaning toward a spec miata and he was wondering bill what some of those basic requirements would be for a spec Miata. So those are the topics I'd like to discuss. I have so many things to say about that. Okay. Nick, sell the Cayman, get something <laughs> else to drive every day, 
use the rest of the proceeds from selling the Cayman to buy a built spec Miata and then race it or drive it on. You can do DEs. You can do whatever you want with it. That's okay. it. <laughs> Episode over. Get a right, get, a, just, get one just with the right seat. Keep in mind that that Ben Dawson is a staunch uh, Miata guy. <laughs> you, yeah, hell yeah! If somebody says they want to spec Miata, do that. Like, you, I mean, you cannot beat the fun per dollar ratio of a Miata. It's so much. I mean, I got blasted around one for years. Like, and and how? So uh, let's ask a real practical question: Is Nick a person who is between five foot one and six feet? Yes. Would you say? Great. Get a spec me out. That was the only other question. Good. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm right at six one and we had built our cage, but we also had put in a containment seat. So we gone from having a, uh, like a kind of a, uh, ultra, we had an ultra shield spec me out of seat in there before. And then we added some, we added some containment wings to that aluminum seat just to kind of get some better protection. But doing that made it where me getting out of the Miata was a lot like, uh, that, What's the guy's Ace Ventura when he's in the and he's in that rhino and mm-hmm. he gets all sweaty in the rhino and then he has to like slide out through the rhino's butthole and he slides out like backwards and naked. It, me getting out of the Miata was very akin to that movie scene at that time where I was having to kind of fall out backwards, but, you know, because you kind of had to get yourself around the around the the containment part of the seat that we added. So mm-hmm. instead of just kind of jumping straight out of the side of the Miata, I had to kind of go out and then fall back. And I had to start being honest with myself as a six foot one big boy who had small children about like how quickly could I really egress myself from this car if I were on fire. And so that's what kind of moved me off of Miatas uh, was just the fact that I was not, I don't think I was being honest with myself about how quickly I could get out of the car, um, you know, in a panic upside down, you know what I'm saying? And I have a little kids. Yep. So, but you know, as long as the right, the right body says, there's nothing wrong with me out there. It's so much fun. I mean, it's, you know, I think if somebody's already got a, a Cayman in their possession and they would like to start just tracking a Miata, I would ditch the Cayman, buy a Civic to drive every day, and then I would just spend the rest of that. I would buy, sorry, I would buy a, probably a 15 or 10 year old Civic to drive every day on the street. I would get one with a manual if I could, just for good racetrack practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, yeah, I would, I would, if you if you could sell a Cayman, you would have money left over to turn around and purchase somebody's spec Miata they're selling, whether it's a shop or somebody's getting out of it. You could buy. I wouldn't say a nationally competitive one, maybe, but you could buy one that is plenty good with tons of spares that you wouldn't have to do a lot of work on. You could go right to the track with it, mm-hmm. and you could probably yeah. even drive it to the track. You could, I'm sure, you can make it. Free. I don't know if you drive yeah. to the track if you wanted to. If you wanted to start relatively small before you start, you know, going to the track with 12 sets of tires and you know, three engines or whatever. But you could do that too with <laughs> with sold Cayman money. You could do a lot of stuff. Yep. Right. So, so I know one of the topics that he had brought up was he was curious about what was required. Um, some of the big basics that we may need, say, for instance, like as far as a car suspension, buy one, sell it's a camera, buy one. Like it's, they, tell, they tell you exactly. They, so, sorry, not to be a smart ass to Nick, um, but yeah, everything is everything is is set out in the NASA and the SCCA rule book as far as what's allowed, what's not allowed. Weights. Uh, there are different stripes of Miata, like different sub levels of generations, and a lot of them have their own specified weight. So, uh, a ninety nine to 01, or sorry, I guess ninety nine to two thousand would have a certain weight, and then oh mm-hmm. one to oh three is a different engine type and different. You know, like I mean, they all have okay. little small differences. But there's 89 a recipe. to 93 or one thing. Yeah. But it's, it's, all, it's all specified. They tell you what shocks you run, what tires are allowed. Um, so there's not a lot of opportunity for hot riding, expect me out. It's when they tell you exactly what to get. Get these sway bars, get these shocks, get these springs. And I think you got a little bit of room to move on the diff. If you want to get a certain, you know, like diff can be a type, but not a certain brand. So you can do a little bit of stuff with the diff, Torsen. What say, Bill? The, the details that you can play with aren't going to matter until you right. are so far down the road, you'll know the yes, answers. Right. In exactly the right. All the stuff you could choose. Yes. In the beginning, just follow the recipe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's, that's a great, that's a great point. And to me, one of the things I've always loved about spec Miata is that it's paid by numbers. I'm not an engineer. I'm a full on dumbass who can drive the shit out of a race car. That's what I am. So tell me the formula. Let me go build that. Uh, I'm building a spec E46, which has a uh, probably, I would say, 30% more room to choose on some components, which is fine for me at this point. I, I, I'm smart enough to make a few choices on a car, I think. But back, in, back when I was getting started, I was like, I love spec Miata because it's like, just tell me what to build. All I know how to do is drive. 
I can drive and I can barely keep a car on track. So give me something that's easy to put together. I don't need any kind of wizardry because I'm dumb. I'm as dumb as the day is long. I cannot figure out which exhaust is the best one to have or which dip. Like, don't, don't, I can't, like, don't put that decision on me. All I can do is drive, you know? So that's my, that's my take. And that's one of the things. Just give me the recipe and I'll bake the book. Exactly. <laughs> Tire pressure and camber and draws the line. Right. That's right. <laughs> I'll do setup stuff to my own preference, but I can't guarantee anybody else will like it. I only know what I like and I can draw. That's it. But so, uh, so my perspectives are not always that useful, but I do know what's easy to work on. This. And if you, if you were fortunate enough to have the kind of money to just roll right into a fully built package, instead of having to build your own from a street car, I would do that. I would grab a car that, that a reputable shop in the area has already built. Um, and I'm sure that anybody in the area kind of points you toward these guys are good. These guys may be less good, but you know what I mean? Whatever. But somebody can point you in the direction of a reputable shop. who will still sell you a built car, probably Planet Miata or somebody like that. It would be a great option, but you can get a fully reputable, safe race car from shops that are built in spec. Miata. I'm so glad Nick that you said spec Miata because that's a class that's been in existence since at least the early 2000s, maybe late 90s. So they've had a lot of time to develop a great class. It's still very active. It's still, if not that most highly subscribed group at every, every you know, club race event, it's right there. Um, so there are plenty of people to race with. Always a good pack. Super easy cars to work on unless you're doing it inside, <laughs> unless you're trying to be upside down in the footwell. Otherwise, really easy. Super fun cars. I, I love mine. So Even the other thing, too, is that I believe – um just by observations that nick i believe is is also very similar to your situation um so he's got little kids a young family they can drive uh, me out of and i don't believe that um that he will be jumping straight in to straight spec so right. um it's fine for now to even just start out with a Miata and just have a general build before you have to go into all the requirements. Um, the Miatas, even basic Miatas have a great um, return on investment. They really do. They hold their value um, quite well. So even getting one that could go between street and mm -hmm. track for now, just to learn in, is not such a bad thing. Sure. That's true. I uh, I think I wouldn't try to have me out on the street at all if I had little kids. Um, just one thing to point out. They're not great little kid cars, I don't think. No, they're not great kid cars. I'm sure he <laughs> has another car, but he's also driving a Cayman, so <laughs> there's yeah. that. Yeah, so I, for, for me, from my perspective, I would swap the Cayman for a, a car that's pretty much a full race car package. Because even if, Nick, even if you're not ready to, to jump right into race and spec me out door to door, there is no harm in having a fully prepped race car because it's a car you can just dump fuel in, hop in, hit the button, go right on track. So you yes. a Miata, a Miata, there's no turbo to worry about cooling down or anything like that. I mean, you can really just go hit a session, get out of your car, walk away from it, get a sandwich, whatever. You might need to put some fuel in there for the next one, but you're not going to. I mean, it's so funny. Like my Even after like years and years of tracking and racing the same Miata, I bought a crate engine at some point. But I mean, I raced for probably, I don't know how many years on this crate engine. My friend Hans never ever even drove the car. So the car, the car kind of freaks me out. I just I rather drive the BMWs we have. But finally, like one day he changed it. He he, I was like, hey Hans, check the oil before the Miata goes ahead again. He went over there and checked the oil because BMW oil gets all brown and black, even if it's relatively new. He goes and checks the oil in the Miata. He's like, this thing's like an oil cleaner. It's crazy. You know I mean, it was always every time he checked the oil in the Miata, it was always like crystal clear. Like I mean, that car, that, those engines are so good. And so anyway, yeah, it's from a low maintenance standpoint. I think even I think I heard him, you say that Nick has has little kids. The thing you change the most often on me out are the brakes. Yeah, and I used to change the brakes a lot because I would run like sprint racing pads at DEs. But if I'd been running endurance racing pads that whole time, I probably would have been changing brakes like once a year during my mm -hmm. heavy like only only doing DE times. So yeah, I mean Miata's are extremely low maintenance, and there's not not a big distinction between do I want to get a Miata that's okay for the street and then build it up myself over time, or do I have the means and the wherewithal to sell my Porsche Cayman and just have a race car that's ready to go to the track whenever I think about it. And all I need to take was maybe a set of brake pads with me, a jug of oil just to be safe, but you're not going to burn any oil in a Miata. I mean, there's so little you need to take to the track. My, I mean, my toolkit was like a little small toolbox I would take with me every time. I mean, it's so it's yeah. it's easy to get going into Miata. You can get a little tire trailer to pull if you want to start having like a set of reins and a set of slicks. You can put your slicks in a little trailer with your tools behind you. 
I mean, the, the biggest danger with me and Miata was I just kept needing more and more stuff because you know I was doing bigger and bigger kind of events. So I needed a little bit more stuff to do in endurance races and stuff. But I mean, you can do a ton with the Miata. So Nick, if you're already in the spec Miata, go get you a built one and go for it. Doesn't matter whether <laughs> it's uh it's you know you can it's always okay to have a full on built spec Miata. It's not like anybody's going to look at you crazy if you want to go do a track event and the car has got numbers on it. That's fine. And you know what? Out there where he's at around Pittsburgh. There, there are quite amount of tracks that he could make a distance drive. Uh, you know, they're not terrible to drive to. I mean, every yeah. track is going to be at some point a distance, but he's he's in a good pocket yeah. that if yeah, he wants to going. explore a little bit. You know, one of the best things that he has is knowing you guys, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he just like met us, so, so. Yeah, keeping in touch, well, exchange yeah. numbers. He just met you, so he'll at least be he'll be willing to talk to you for a little while until he gets to know you guys a little bit more. And like, ah, That's I'm right. Gonna clear <laughs> you guys. I'm going I'm I'm to listen to that. everyone racers now. He's got, yeah. he's got a great resource. I hope you guys were able to kind of get him going in a direction that's fun for him and worked well for him and his family. But I mean, he, he started out in the right direction. Talking about a Miata. Damn, those are great and, you know, they're so. And I was telling him too, they are so easy to work on. Yes. They're the, My they are probably one of the easiest cars. That and a Honda are probably one of the easiest cars to work on. If Ben Dawson's dumbass can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> what you got, Bill? If he's just starting, one thing we didn't say. Spec Miata, regular Miata, it doesn't matter. He needs to have a right seat in the car. Yes, definitely. Yeah, if you're just getting going, there's nothing more valuable than the feedback you can get from people who can ride with you. And then eventually you kind of can put more context together by riding with other people. At first, have somebody in the car with you telling you, all right, go, stop, go, stop. And that'll kind of help you get your rhythm built out and get going too. Yep. All right. So, Nick, welcome to the family. Come on in. The water's yeah. just fine. <laughs> I, yeah, Nick, I can't I can't wait to meet you out there. Good luck. Ben's gonna be in pit race soon. That's right. October. Come come out hang out for that one and see That's more. Right. Oh my gosh. Ben. Yeah, we'll we'll be there for the lucky dog. Uh-huh. Lucky. We hope to be the luckiest of the dogs. We do. Or at least yep. one, of, one of the dogs. Actually, we might be three <laughs> of the dogs the way things are going. But my, my three year old is almost four. He's just walking on the holiday and he goes. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> like where where'd you get that, buddy? Yeah, he know. had so much he had so much fun at Monster Jam today. Monster Jam was nuts. I was going crazy. He was bouncing. He was like leaning over over my leg, like bouncing, like just staring at everybody. He was so excited. Yeah, he he I had to like tear his little toy monster truck away from him because he was just riding around the bedroom like rah, 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 making monster truck noise. Like guy, mm-hmm. we we either broke him or we totally made him good forever. I can't tell you. But I think we probably made him good forever. He loved it. Well, you know, there's an apple and a tree, and they're very close to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he really heard the song of our people today, and it, it, it resonated. Yeah. You can tell. It, 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 it's got him now. I'm so excited. You know, I can't wait for the first Dominic with Dawson with special guest. <laughs> Joplin Dawson signing on, right? That's right. I'm in my oh, spec yeah. Miata. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this for a minute, so like, uh, it's not that far off. <laughs> <laughs> got, a, got a couple more, couple more days before this happens. I mean, because there, there are like 11 and 12 year old kids racing cars now. Am I right? There was mm-hmm. a 13 year old in HBDE four in a spec Miata at Hell the, yeah. this weekend. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I did until he passed me, and I was very upset. You so. should <laughs> blow your doors off. He, he, <laughs> he, he, he did not pass me. I threw oh. that sucker right into the grass. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Never, never. My name is not for stopping. Anyway, mm-hmm. thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. That was fun. Good mm-hmm. luck, Nick.